perhaps the world's tallest pecan tree. Right there is a uh, power line post that the electric company put in. It's a little bit taller than most of the utility posts because uh, big trucks kept coming through there on the road and knocking my power line down. So the last time the electric company they put in a larger post, taller. Hmm. Anyway, that's the post right there. Now we're going to start going up to, to the country. Anyway, I know that I was a chosen uh, minister of God, so, and there are many false prophets on YouTube, so I consider anyone that argues with me to be pretty much a liar. And I can tell you another thing, Jesus the Christ himself told me that the Bible is his prophet. And I assumed that he was talking about the King James Version of the Bible because that's the one I studied from. So anyone that argues with me, as far as my foundation goes, someone would try to say, well, I'm not 100% accurate. Well, as far as the foundation, I consider I am 100% accurate. And I do get mess up on details. You know, I, there's some things I do get wrong. But as far as general foundation, I'm sure I'm probably the only person in the world that's even got it right. And that's going to really have to be taught by others that can understand it to teach it to others. But nobody's really been obedient enough to to learn the foundation that I've learned from, directly from God. Well, I did have a little bit of help. Somebody that taught me about the foundation called um, the Fulfillment of Iniquity. And uh, also went into predestination, but... N uh, it was at first the Calvinist type of predestination, but then I, later I understood what this predestination really is. You know, um, what does it say in uh, Saint Matthew chapter 7? A good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit, neither can a... Um, get this straight, neither a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit, neither can a good tree bring forth bad fruit fruit. Jesus is the good fruit. Now if somebody's teaching grace, teaching works, well then they're bringing forth a bad work. But if they're teaching grace, then they can only be bringing a good work. However, there is repentance. And when I talk about repentance, what I mean is is choosing sides, make a 180 degree turnaround. Um, you denounce one side for the other. You cannot call God and something else both righteous. That doesn't mean we're not sinners, you know, subject to the lust of the flesh. But it does mean that you have to make an oath to choose one and reject another. You can't call both righteous. And that's what I mean by repentance, is you confess that only God, Yahweh, alone is righteous. And anybody that tries to say that the Bible's wrong, you know, or being messed up, well, then they're wrong. I mean, there's some man-made mistakes in there, you know, or they try to put their own stuff in there, but if you read through the Bible and get a general understanding, then you can usually find the mistakes. You'll know when it's a mistake, because, you know, if you see two stories, one's written, but you do comparison and then, uh, put, see, the Bible is not without common sense. It's not without, you have to have a law of, uh, laws that go with it. You know, laws of nature, laws of common sense. 
and that's how it works and you just can't take a little phrase and then build a foundation around it it has to have it has to make common sense or it's not the gospel it has to be logical or it is not the gospel and that's about all I wanted to uh, say for right now that there are false prophets um, we are they say that we shouldn't judge others well that's nonsense uh, you know they'll say well you shouldn't call somebody a fool or something like that well the Bible itself says uh, it's a fool that says there is no God and and the Apostle Paul himself said some people were foolish. He called the Galatians foolish people because they b went and believed some false prophets instead of what was originally taught to them. You know, they weren't bl really believing in Jesus. They were they were believing the false doctrines taught to them. So yeah, we are to judge. And one of the things about it is that, as it says in St. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 38, and St. John chapter 8, 44, there are them that are the, that are the children of the devil. It does not bring joy to me to minister to them. They're judged by my words, yeah. They're going to give account of the words that I speak to them if they if they disrespect what I'm saying they will they're going to be judged by it and that's going to be held to their charge to, make, to bring them more guilty for uh, disrespecting Jesus but um, it, it really brings no joy to me for that the children, the actual true children of God, that's where you get the joy is when you know you can set them free from the vexations of the world the, to expose, to teach them about the lies that they've been lied to. See, I was brought up under these laws, of, this religion of condemnation too, you know, and... Until one day, I, you know, these people that I call the fluoride head king lovers, meaning they're intoxicated on fluoride, they, they boast in the Illuminati. These really are not of God. I mean, because they, even in the natural, even in the natural, they don't even believe the things that are truth. They cannot come to, even when it's shown to them 100% scientific evidence that uh, the world's trade centers were blown up by controlled demolition. They don't, I don't believe that. You see, they're trying to defend a corrupt government because they are of corruption. Or that's what they'll try to do, do is defend a a wicked government where people are not allowed to vote that puts people into condemnation so I suggest uh, that you do some your own study the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the the true Bible read the New Testament first learn about who Jesus really is but yeah this thing that you're supposed to be kind and bid everyone Godspeed that's a lie if, if they don't if they will not receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you can just pretty much write them off. You know, once they've been told the true gospel. I mean, Jesus didn't tell tell us to beg anyone. What he told is uh, the apostles, if you come to a house that seems worthy, uh, then and if they will not receive you in, to shake the dust off your feet in a day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city. And Sodom and Gomorrah was pretty corrupt. I mean, they weren't... Uh, the apostles 
Apostle Paul would say that uh, they gave over their natural affections. They weren't actual homosexuals. It, but it was like they became so corrupt in their ideologies, laws and ideology, that it was like uh, it was like a righteous thing to them to be a homosexual. So, and that, that applies to a lot of things, you know, not just uh, giving up the natural affection, that not just homosexuality, but that applies to a lot of things. You know, these churches, they preach a false doctrine, most of them. You know, when the, I can tell you one thing they do is, we know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, when were we born again? We were, we were crucified with Christ. That's when we were born again. You must be born again, but we were crucified with Christ. As the Apostle Paul said. So that's when we were born again. I mean, they're teaching a doctrine. Well, if you never heard the gospel, then you can't never be saved. And I just don't believe that. If you never heard the gospel, then you, you're not going to be saved. Jesus said, all that my Father has given me shall come to me, and out of them I shall lose none. That means all of his are going to believe. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. If you don't believe, then you lose your salvation. But if you believe, then you won't lose it. But you already got it. It's a finished work at the cross, or stake as some people would say. But it was, a fi it was a finished deal. It was finished. The world was saved. Jesus took the authority away from Satan. It's now his, the world now belongs to Jesus. So, yeah, we're already saved. But we're still to go into all the world and preach the gospel because that's how the devil is defeated by us going and teaching people so they can testify of the righteousness of the Christ and be baptized in his name and believe on the word of God. Yeah, why? Well.